my simple uh, financial uh, methods that I adopted for my business, because I'm not a financial person. Really. So I taught him everything. And by the time um, I had decided to close my business, Dumasani was in a position to take it over. And he now had, runs uh, the clothing business. My business was called Ronnie B. And he's now called his business Dumi B. <laughs> and uh, uh, he has two motor cars, he employs people, and he's a successful businessman. Wow. Wow. I follow the philosophy of Ben Zander, who is a communicator, a conductor, and, uh, a whole, uh, and an author. And Ben Zander's uh, philosophy is to make people powerful. And I'll refer back to him at the end of my presentation. So I went through a stage in my life where I had totally lost my confidence and my life just fell apart. And I started working at the Durban University of Technology at this time for the clothing and textile centre. And uh, it took me two years uh, because uh, my need to empower people and help them to get into business uh, was stronger than the work that I had to do. And it took me two years to persuade the CETA to give me the finances to run what is called a new venture creation program. And since I've been involved in action research through, with my master's degree, I actually realized that what I've been doing is action re research because I've never been happy with anything. I always have to push a little bit more and I think about it and think what else I can do. So it took me two years to get the money to run the new venture creation program. But at the same time, I was still in that space of having no confidence in myself and in a very bad space. So I project managed this um, new venture creation and I stayed away from it. I got other people to teach. And we ran four groups, and we got 80 people through this uh, program, and we taught them how to run a business. The, the facilitator ran them through the six-week program and gave them the lessons on how to run a business. I still stayed, but I, I couldn't really stay back because I could see that the people being taught were not really being able to start a business. We were organizing a CC so easy. Just go onto the CIPRA website, get a whole lot of CCs, and your stats look wonderful for the Department of Labor. But I wasn't happy. So I started taking a step into this group and a step out of my bad space. And I organized for them to go to uh, the Durban Fashion Week because we had some fashion designers there. And we, um, we had to teach them. And in fact, I had to take them to Lee Scott in the fashion department because even though they had done a fashion diploma at a private school in Durban, they couldn't put a, a, a storyboard together. They couldn't do anything. And I needed them to, to, I needed the people to see that, I needed the group to see that they had to showcase themselves. They had to get out into, um, the, uh, into the world as fashion designers. But I couldn't have a poor group um, because it would reflect on me. So I took them to me, we put the uh, storyboard together, it was accepted, and we had to work hard and coach them and teach them about quality and all that kind of thing. And they ended up being um, reported in the newspaper the reporter, the headline was, from mediocre to marvelous. From not being able to do anything, they were on the ramp and their designs were stunning and it was, a it was such a success. But I could still see that what I was doing wasn't working because they were not getting into business. They were not making any money. They were not making any progress. So the funding for the new venture creation had run out. And I sent another project proposal to the center for more funding. I still <coughs> took a step back and got somebody else there, a business coach. I thought this would work. She did work. It did work very well. Um, 
she did make an impact on the group. The group was actually smaller. We invited all 80 plus a whole lot of other people. And we ended up with quite a small group and she did make an impact. They started saving money. They started to uh, get motor car licenses. They started to take themselves seriously as business people. Um, they started to uh, rent premises and do all that kind of thing. But I still wasn't totally happy, so I took another step in. And I got them to do a, a fashion show at the SNAE um, uh, conference last year. Sorry, and can I interrupt? I'm sorry. Yes. <coughs> oh, sorry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <coughs> I must congratulate you for inspiring your world, for supporting it. I have, I have very little to do with it. They're all marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> so we're wow. yeah. Just letting people do what they're passionate about is, is a magic button. Mm. And getting out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Really hesitant to interrupt because, yeah, I was very hesitant to interrupt when the talk is so so clear at the present, but um, I took advice from the technicians. Yes, I hope we don't rely too much on on this. Is it's so clear what uh, we hear that Bonnie is doing. Bonnie, would you like to just continue? Because really, it's, it's not yes, splendid what you do. You're doing well. You're doing well. Is it clear? They went to the SMB fashion show, and again, you know, they had showstoppers and they were wonderful. But I, I still wasn't happy. And I didn't realize at the time I was doing <coughs> action research with reflecting and thinking, what can I change? How can I make it better? But now we had run out of the funding for the business coach. And I, who else was there to do it but me? So mm. I had to yeah. take that fourth step in. And I had to start using my own experience of running a business. My own experience of having no confidence. <coughs> and I had to now go and be their coach and their mentor. And their role model. And I climbed in, feet and all, and I just instinctively followed my, my nose and decided what to do with the group. And because of being in our Sestute group, one of the people came in and he was going to do a master's on personal branding. He's a sportsman. So a light bulb went on for me and I thought, okay, the first... Um, uh, workshop I'm going to run is going to be <coughs> personal branding. And then I, I listened to Jack and Jack Whitehead and Joan and so I thought they've got to have a lived experience in their business. They have to now be the business, be the personal brand, be the business, business plan, be everything. So I started to introduce um, a lot of the things that I was learning from action research and living theory methodology and said, this is how you guys are going to do it now. So the first time we, uh, we spent about three weeks on personal branding and I decided we had to start with them finding out what their values were. And because I'm also an artist, I got a big huge board, I covered it with fabric and I painted the background and then I brought in all the, the paint. And I painted the background blue. And I, the reason I said to them, we are going to find what your values and principles are, and we are going to paint it on a blue sky. Because at the moment, they're up in the sky. <coughs> and when you know what your values and principles are, and they become part of you, then we will paint them in the roots of a tree, and we will start painting this tree uh, of your business and what's happening. <coughs> 